Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the D-Rich Show, where we talk anything and everything crypto. Now, here's your host, D-Rich. Hey everybody, welcome back to the D-Rich Show. This is D-Rich and today is June 3rd, 2021. How's everybody's Thursday doing, uh, going? Uh, I hope it, this video finds you all in good health, good spirits, and good energy as always. And again, I want to make sure that you guys are acknowledged. Thank you guys so much for um, always tuning into the videos and hitting the like button, the subscribe button. And for those um, who have just come on, thank you for uh, joining us. And uh, for those who, who have been here, I want to make sure that you guys are well appreciated. So thank you guys so much. And again, I hope that you guys are going to have an outstanding Thursday. Uh, we're close to the uh, weekend, uh, but we still have a lot of room to grow uh, before we get to the uh, weekend. Um, hopefully it's a relaxing weekend, but if not, uh, we want to still push the envelope to get more information out. And today on today's video, we're going to be talking about a whole lot of iota um, where it makes sense for uh, you to try to connect some dots as I've connected some dots and this started um, earlier this week with uh, uh, Jeffrey giving me um, some information about DAG it was up to me to um, consider it and it was also up to me to do some research regarding it um, with some of the other cryptocurrencies um, that were associated with DAG <clears throat> we got like um, we got like Darrow, we got LTX, which AWASH gave out yesterday, um, XDAG, King DAG, Phantom, um, again, IOTA, Ubix. Um, so thank you, um, Jeffrey, again, for that information. And AWASH, again, thank you for um, um, Lattice for yesterday's video. Um, but now we're going to go into IOTA, which is um, still part of that uh, network of some sorts. And we want to make sure that we... Um, go through discovery um, and find different information so we can connect the dots how it's connected to is 0222 as well um, so guys let's go ahead and get right into it um, and as always we will talk about the coin market cap just the top 10 i don't want to go too far into it 41.6 um, percent um, is bitcoin's dominance while ethereum is at 18.7 and bitcoin has um, bumped up a little bit thirty eight thousand five hundred and seventy eight dollars with some change there and then we got um, Ethereum at $2,798.88. And um, here we go with uh, Binance Coin, um, $417.17. That 17 is always on point, isn't it? Anyway, Cardano is at $1.82 at number five. And then we got Dogecoin there. Um, Doge is at 40 cents, um, down 2% over the last uh, 24 hours, but no worries. It's still at 40 cents. So if you did get into dogecoin at 29 30 31 cents um, you did still make some profit there and if you've been holding dogecoin um you know that's just what a holder does um xrp is at a dollar oh three <clears throat> sitting at number seven and polka dot is at number eight at 27 dollars and 13 cents up 6.4 percent over the last 24 and then we got uh usdc um, trying to get to 23 um, billion on the market cap um, is um, pushing closer, but we'll get there. And uh, Uniswap is at uh, $28.32, rounding out the top 10. And folks, we could look at the coin market cap and you know look at it for ourselves. And Theta's pushing up again. Um, you know we talked about V Chain. V Chain was at uh, 12 cents yesterday, up almost to 14 cents today. And then we got Filecoin again. Filecoin is, I think, is going to be a long-term um, advantage. And then EOS there, um, some other, you know, pretty good ones. That KSM, you can get uh, if you are in the KSM. I never got any of that. Kusama, um, you can get staking rewards or um, Power Piggy um, on uh, Bitru for that. And then again, we're going to be talking a whole lot about my Oda Iota which is sitting at number 31 on the market cap, up almost 10% in the last 24 hours. So let's go ahead and uh, get right into IOTA. 
All right, so we don't have to waste any time. We'll leave it at that. I able to take a step closer to the decentralization with the 2.0 DevNet. And the IoT focus network is gradually looking to remove its central coordinator row. And um, this is an article that was uh, written today, this morning, 6.25 a.m. by Ian Allison. Internet of Things Focus Network IOTA took a step closer to being decentralized with the launch of the IOTA 2.0 DevNet without governing coordinator, which is a kind of backstop in the existing system needed to prevent concerted malicious attacks. And the system announced that the blog post on Wednesday will test the network's Tangle protocol, which uses directed a click a cyclic graph, which is DAG, that we talked about earlier this week and most of the week rather than mining blocks like other chains and the gradual uh, replacement of the coordinator with a decentralized system of reputation and incentives is a process that the IOTA Foundation says it is discovering as it goes along and leading up to the current release a number of challenges were solved to allow for the removal of the coordinator and the new solution um, is modular meaning that each protocol component can be independently replaced should new research reveal further optimizations and the um, IOTA foundation says that its tech is used in the enterprise space across sectors such as automotive and mobility e-health digital identity smart energy and supply chain and global trade in the past IOTA has come in for criticism for apparent flaws in the tangle protocol but that's not here nor there folks because we're going to get into a whole lot of the internet of things um, and again, I want you guys to keep an um, eye on this right here. Um, <clears throat> automotive. Okay, because we're going to be talking about Iridium um, and how it might apply to uh, some sort of um, backing or precious metal um, when it comes to IOTA. A lot of folks think I'm kind of crazy, but okay. Um, I can only speculate and I can only come to the conclusions for myself. Um, and you guys have to do the same thing. This is an article from November 11, 2015. Um, again, we're almost talking six years ago. Um, IoT takes to the skies as Iridium <clears throat> looks to get in on the action. Um, test of low LoRaWAN <clears throat> backhaul communications over Iridium. Constellation of six, six LEO satellites covering the globe. Stream technologies considering its use for pop-up networks. And guys, I don't want to go too much into this, um, but uh, when you're talking about progressive IoT platform provider stream technologies and the LoRa Alliance may just have given satellite service Iridium one more chance to play a significant role in connecting the world. And it has also announced that the successful de demonstration of the LoRaWAN uh, backhaul communications for IoT devices via satellite. Now, guys, I want you guys to um, pay attention to this word right here, which is WAN, W-A-N. Um, we do know that Ripple um, do um, did make a partnership with uh, WAN as well. Okay, so keep an eye on that. I don't know if that has anything to do with anything, um, but, you know, when I see words like that, um, I want to go down the um, rabbit hole and, and check it out. So there's a new chapter for Leo's. Um, and this opens up great possibilities for using the LoRa networks where cellular cover is not available and where using multiple satellite endpoints is not cost effective. Um, and um, this is the CTO at Stream Technology. We are excited to be able to leverage the Iridium network to enable LoRa networks everywhere, opening up new opportunities for um, M2M and Internet of Things industries. And we know that uh, IOTA wants to be the Internet of Things. So um, I'll leave the rest of this um, in the description. You can read it, kind of come to your own conclusions. Um, take some of these words out here, research them, and things like that. So I want to go over here um, when it comes to the word stream, um, streams. Um, IOTA streams. I'm not sure if, again, this is connection of any sort. But when I did my research and I looked up, iota and stream this is what i got iota stream streams is an organizational tool for structuring and navigating secure data through the tangle streams organizes data by ordering it in a uniform and interoperable structure again keyword interoperable 
make data useful. Um, today we produce more digital data than ever and the onset of the Internet of Things will increase the amount of data by 79.0 bytes by 2025 and accelerate its growth. The problems, how can we organize the data? How can we share it across systems and industries? And how can we use it to reduce costs, increase efficiency, and unlock an estimated 11.1 trillion economic value? Now, folks, we don't even have a $2 trillion market cap uh, for cryptocurrencies. But when these folks are talking about trying to unlock and estimate it, just we could, we could lowball it a little bit. We'd add a little $5 trillion, okay, to the market, just to half it. Six, six trillion. But we're talking about eleven point one trillion dollar in economic value being pumped into the market. We'll see what happens. IOTA streams, IOTA benefits. You got integrity and authenticity. Um, authenticity. Um, let me not even try because my I'm getting tongue twisted here. Organization and analysis. Okay, access and payment. And how I don't. <laughs> how does IOTA streams work? You got streams, all branches of a stream reference, a common root branch and state associated with the original publisher, thus guaranteeing data authenticity. There, I said it. The Tangle uh, data is transferred and secure over an immutable distributor ledger, which is the Tangle. And then you also have publishers and publishers can send non-encrypted open data in a stream for everyone to see. Publishers can also restrict access to the data or make it completely private using public key encryption. And then you also have subscribers and then you got controlled data sharing. And I'll leave the uh, rest of the information for you to read. And again, I wanted you to pay attention to um, uh, car manufacturing. OK, I think that was something over here that I wanted to have you pay attention to. So perhaps I might be on to something when it talks about automotive, okay, because you've got car manufacturing, which has something to do with automotive. So um, maybe I might be on to something. I might not be. I don't know. Um, I just want to put this out there because at the end of the day, as I wrap this video up here, um, at the end, you will uh, most definitely see where I'm going with this. So stick by and we'll get that information to you. Um, here at the end of the video. But anyway, we're going to move right on over here to this article that I found, um, which is uh, by Man, um, ManixTechGroup.com, Internet of Things, Lower Power One, which I told you about, LP1 Technologies. Um, this was uh, the 229-2020. And then an Internet of Things, Lower Power One Technologies, an LP1 lower power wide array area network is a type of wireless network well suited for the Internet of Things and sensors where low power, low range data communication is a requirement. And typically LP1 technologies have data rates of less than 100 uh, kbps, so are not comparable to broadband, but are well suited to data transmission from IoT sensors and the primary attributes to distinguish the LP1 from other network technologies include long range, low power, and low cost. And there are ever there are several different LP1 technologies, but the most common tend to include LoRaWAN, Sigfox, uh, narrowband IoT, Zigbee, and Wison. So alongside these LP1 technologies, some IoT applications also may use Wi-Fi, 3G, 4G, Zigbee, and XB, and which lower uh, power one technologies should I use for my project? You got power availability, um, frequency and measurement, sensor setup, network availability, international markets, public or private development, hardware support, and then um, you can how can you calculate IoT power usage? Um, etc etc so um, again I'm not saying that any of this is uh, connected um, but I just wanted to go over the Internet of Things which is the lower power one technologies as well and then we're gonna move over here to the um, blog which is from the IOTA foundation which they receive 
TM Form Award as an enabler for digital transformation. And um, let's go ahead and get up into this and you'll understand why I'm putting this out there. IOTA Foundation receives TM Form Award as enabler for digital transformation. And this was in November 20th, 2020 of last year, last week, after a month of online keynotes, roundtables, presentations, and demonstrations, the Digital Transformation World Series 2020 ended with a live stream from London offices of TM Forum, the event organizers. On this last day, TM Forum, the organized driver digital transformation to, uh, in the telecommunication industry recognized the work of several solution and technology providers by awarding seven outstanding Catalyst proof of concept projects. Uh, the water projects were selected for their significant contributions to the acceleration of digital transformation throughout the industry. The IOTA Foundation, which is also a member of the TM Forum, was among those contributors awarded with the Business Impact Catalyst Award. What is this initiative and how IOTA is being used? And during the last month, the IOTA Foundation joined the Digital Business Marketplace, DBM. TM Form Catalyst. A catalyst is an innovation playground in which TM Form members come together to develop new innovation solutions to solve out um, challenges created by champions. Champions. Uh, the goal is to derive standards that the TM Form can promote to drive the adoption and uh, reclamation. My words are just not working today. So of these innovations. I'm not going to get my tongue twisted too much today anyway. So anyway, the Catalyst Team Award, Outstanding Catalyst Business Impact. So you got IOTA there. You got Accenture there. Um, you got R3 um, right there and AWS. I mean, you connect the dots. You tell me what you think um, is going on with IOTA. Okay, I want to hear what you have to say about um, what I'm doing as far as um, leading you down the trail with IOTA, the ISO 222, uh, DAG, some of the connections, things like that. Um, and you know what? We're going to go down that. Along with other technology providers, IOTA collaborated with Accenture, AWS, and all of these others. You got R3, Stratus Technologies, Tantalon, Ulster University, University of Surrey, Vetro, FiberMap. And the goal of this uh, year DBM Catalyst was to explore how many companies in traditional industries can be digitally transformed by further digitizing their products, services, and their supply chain. And the result of the creation of the DBM in which uh, companies select and orchestrate a number of integrated services are to deliver end-to-end -end solutions in vertical domains such as smart grid, smart factory, smart theater, and smart logistic all underpinned by the ability to provide zero touch development and configuration of selected services okay so um read the rest of this here but i want to go down a little bit further so we can understand where we're going with a lot of these things it's not actually this article it's the next article i'm sorry but anyway so um you kind of get where i'm going with iota well, who's their connections and then also this i want to um, go over here um, they received TM and and here real quick I wanted to uh, show you this picture I want to go back to it you got the TM form right you also got IOTA boom right and then you got Inapta founding members so now we're gonna go take a peek at that and what that represents for IOTA right and this is uh, from IOTA news and um, IOTA becomes a founding member of New International Association of Trusted Blockchains Applications. This was last updated on December 30th, 2020. Okay, IOTA becomes a founder member of New International Association of Trusted Blockchain Applications. Again, INATBA, which we showed you on the little picture there. And uh, Brussels, Belgium, April 3rd, 2019. Okay, IOTA Foundation, a nonprofit foundation focused on distributed ledger technology and permissionless ecosystem development, announced today that it has joined the International Association of Trusted Blockchain Applications as a founding member. 
Okay, you can't erase that. You can't change that. They've joined. It is happening on this level. And NABDA's core directive is to promote the use of DLT technology by developing a predictable, transparent, and trust-based global framework. And NABDA is um, offers developers and users of the DLT a global forum to interact with regulators and policymakers and bring DLT and blockchain technology to the next stage. And the initiative is an outgrowth of the EU Blockchain Industry Roundtable, a European Commission hosted group convened to identity the right to identify the right court conditions for DLT to flourish. And the association was legally formed in March, more than a hundred founding members, including major DLT and blockchain providers, large scale users, startups and businesses and sectoral association. But this is where I wanted to go down here. You can read the rest of this and stuff like that. But what I wanted to go down here to is um, there's some um, as part of this collaborative approach and now this founders enshrined their four goals. You can read those goals right there. And then I wanted to roll over here to the founding organizations include. You could look at the list here. You got a censure. Um, as we know of, then you got all of these other ones. You got BBVA. Let's see. What else we got? You got um, Cardano there. I'm not a fan of them too much, but whatever. Um, who else we got? We're about to see some good stuff here because I know I scrolled down here before. And um, again, you got the IOTA Foundation, you got Ledger, you even got L'Oreal, okay? You got the Quant Network, which we talked about, and we also got R3, and then Ripple Labs there, ladies and gentlemen. You got that Ripple Labs, how you like that there? How you like that connection? So then you also got Swift um, and everything else. You got Unibright. Um, I do hold Unibright cryptocurrency in my portfolio, by the way. So um, being that I see that, I just wanted to point that out real quick. And then again, you can go ahead and read a little bit more about the IOTA Foundation and things like that. So um, anyway, guys, um, here we go. We got the ISO, International Protocol Family, and ISO um, 222 Ecosystem. You got IOTA there. You got Ripple, which is XRP. And then you got Zenfin XDC. You got Algorand. We haven't dived into Algorand a little bit. Um, I am bullish on all of these in the um, family here. You got XLM as well. So, And then they're also um, part of the founding members of Inabda. So um, at the end of the day, um, I just speculate. I come to my own conclusions. I hold every single one of these assets in my portfolio. I hold the most of Ripple first, X, X, well, I take that back. I have more Zenfin and XTC than I do XRP, but however, the value of XRP is higher and greater if you get what I'm saying. Um, I was able to buy Zenfin early, and um, I just I have just as much um, of both, but I'll leave it at that. I won't even uh, get into that. Um, I have a lot of XLM, and I have a lot of um, Algorand. I have enough iota but not enough iota if you get what i'm saying um, so anyway um, come to your own conclusions do you due diligence do your own research um, and if folks are giving you information you want to make sure that you are following through on that information provided um, so that you know you can put that information out there to um, the public uh, for consumption and um, here we are um, a whole good week of dag um, their network, um, things like that. So I'm excited about those projects. Again, I'll point those out. You got Lattice, you got Darrow, you got Ubix. Okay, you got Phantom, FTM, you got KDAG and XDAG. And Ubix is uh, UBX or UBIX. And you got Darrow is, is D-E-R-O. Um, and they're in a pretty good uh, price range for you to add a few to your bag. 
here and there. And again, a lot of these uh, coins are on KuCoin. Um, so you can go ahead and purchase those there. IOTA is on Binance.us as well as Bitru. And um, yeah, we're going to go ahead and continue to um, stack those bags on, on those cryptocurrencies. And finally, before we end the video for today, um, this is coming from CryptoBase.org. Nebraska signs law to authorize state charter banks to custody crypto. This was a week ago, and the reason why I want to point this one out and no, folks, these prices are absolutely false um, over here um, when it comes to price. Because if Dogecoin was sitting at 13 cents, most definitely we will be stacking that up. So again, these uh, numbers are fake, phony, and false there. Uh, this bill was co-authored by the cryptocurrency firm Tailcoin, T-E-L. So if you hold Tailcoin, uh, you can stake that in Power Piggy. Um, on Bitru, it is on Bitru, and this is in my bag um, as well. Was introduced by Republican State Senator Mike Flood. Mm. Interesting. Watch the waters, huh? I guess. Watch the water. You heard of that term? A crypto friendly bill co authored by a cryptocurrency firm and first introduced by a Republican State Senator Mike Flood this January was signed into law today in Nebraska. Nebraska Financial Innovation Act was one of the Senator Flood's first initiatives introduced scarcely two weeks after being sworn into office, and it will also authorize the regulation of digital asset depositories in the state by creating a new state banking charter tailored for digital asset-backed financial services. Republican lawmakers outnumber Democrats almost two to one in the state legislature, 32 to 17, and remember this is always going to come back um, in short order. Um, and numbers for this week's final vote were 46 to 2. Um, again, that number 17 is always popping up. And then again, uh, Republic, Repu I want you to read this. Okay, I want you to keep an eye on this number right here because this will be a part of what's going to transition us to August. And I will i don't want to get into it, but remember, I'm telling you, this here, this number 32 to 17 will go back to the legislator at some point. OK, and it's one vote per state, one vote per state from the legislature. OK, and the final vote goes to the senior member of the Senate. And this means that uh, the if, if it's a tie, if it's a tie. So eventually this 32 to 17, um, you remember that in a couple weeks. In, in a couple weeks time when um, a lot of things are getting uh, revealed to us um, so anyway guys telcoin and telcom's focus blockchain firm um, that operates services on the ethereum network has been actively involved in drafting the bill um, the company found a ready partner in senator flood who began the year by pledging to make nebraska into a fintech hub and has a parallel initiative which the transactions in a digital asset act underway and he told reporters in January, one of the things that we need to do is create high paying, high skilled jobs. We also need to create jobs that bring wealth into the community. I have been working with someone I've known for a very long time and he's in the cryptocurrency business and he has an interest in locating in Norfolk and there is a great opportunity in the area. All right, so um, I'm going to look at finding out who this person is connected to going to Norfolk. Okay. We'll figure that out and hopefully we can get some information and more insight as far as that's concerned. But again, um, you got Nebraska allows banks to custody crypto. So here we go, folks, we're getting um, closer to something. And again, um, June is a very hot month. Okay. We also got the release of the flare tokens we got you know the airdrops and things coming online like that and we we got so much to look forward to um, we might even get uh, regulatory clarity and the ones that follow fall under the uh, regulatory clarity of ISO 222 I assume will uh, pass the uh, smell test and that goes uh, with those who are associated with them as far as business partners things like that 
Um, so you don't necessarily have to um, understand that they're not associate, they're not on that list necessarily. But again, when you have partnerships and deals um, and things like that, typically, normally, um, those are grandfathered in so that they get the compliance and regulatory clarity that they deserve as well. Anyway, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video, today's information. Um, share the video, pass it along on your favorite platforms. And if you're new, again, hit that subscribe button, the rumble button, uh, the thumbs button, thumbs up button, as well as the like button, wherever it might be. Okay, and I appreciate you guys always uh, tuning in to the videos. We'll be back tomorrow with some more information. Have a great rest of your Thursday. God bless, take care, and as always, treat everyone with class, dignity, and respect. Bye-bye.